We're live, people. Is anybody there? Is anybody home? Hello? Hello, is anybody there? I miss you. So this is what it's like at nine o'clock at night. Huh, amazing. Hi, Karen. How are you? And is Troy there as well? Good evening, Leah. I want to say good morning, but I know that's uh, in, incorrect. And I don't know it because it's dark outside, because it's dark outside in the morning too, but uh, anyway. Hi, Aubrey Turley. Hey, your husband's getting ready to be home at night. Is that good news? Sean, good evening. Denny Snyder, God bless you. Why are you not in bed, Denny? It's nine o'clock at night. <laughs> Hello, Troy. How are you, my brother? Good to see you, buddy. Well, listen, I'm glad. Jeremy Sharp, good evening to you, buddy. You've had a full couple of days. Vicki Whitlock, you get the line of the day, actually the line of the week. I have been quoting you when, uh, when I asked uh, Thursday or Friday morning, I said, so what are you all doing? What are you doing this weekend? Anybody having any big plans? And Vicki Whitlock's response was, I'll be perfecting non-essentialism. Something like that. That was hilarious. And really, I've kind of stolen that for myself. I'm kind of doing the exact same thing. Uh, hi, Chad Lamison. Good to see you, man. Remember that time when you stayed at my house? That was awesome. Hi, Judy. Good to see you. Well, here we are in the evening. I, I you know, I never, uh, I never get the evening slot. They give me the morning one because that's the one nobody wants, right? The evening one, that's when everybody's like alive and awake. That's the one they try and keep me away from because uh, usually I'm, I'm pretty animated by nine o'clock at night and so that's pretty crazy. Hello, Pam Clary and Joe Lewis and Stephen Weiss. This is just, fa is this great or what? Hi, Thelma, good to see you. Hello, Jim Connors. Isn't this great? Technology's terrific. My, my lovely bride is sitting right next to me and uh, usually she is at work at 9 a.m. in the morning slot, but um, yeah, she's home and so, uh, I love that. Good evening, Pam Olson and Randy and Mary Rogers. Love having you here. And Carol Schaefer, you're here too. Good. Welcome. Vicki, that was absolutely hilarious. I got a kick out of that. And, and to all my friends out there, I would tell you, if anybody's asking what you're doing, just tell them that you are perfecting non-essentialism. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty good. Hello, Linda Wagers. Remember when we were in Israel? That would, now that lady was a good time. That was a good time. Well, yeah, well, we're going to wait a couple of minutes. It's just now nine o'clock straight up now. And so, uh, yeah, there you go. Michael Turley is actually on his way to work now. Hello, Anita Bonet. Nice to see you. Glad that you're, or at least it's nice to see your little icon uh, right next to your name. It's nice to see your name, actually, is what it's nice to see. But I'm glad you're here. Oh, welcome. Tonight is, um, uh, I'm kind of excited about this. It's the evening prayer slot and uh, looking for, hello there, Dave and uh, Ray Jean. Glad you're here. And Tammy Jordan uh, and Chris and Pam. God bless you. Love you guys. Debbie Huntsman. Welcome. Love you too. Glad you're here. Uh, and good evening, Tammy. How about that? There you go. Great. Well, hey, listen. Um, so yeah, we're going to give it a couple minutes and let uh, let people uh, let people find us and and uh, know that uh, know that we're here. But I'm glad you're here. I'm actually kind of excited about the uh, the evening time slot. I I, uh, I, I never get to do the uh, the evening prayer time, so it's nice to be able to be a part of that. And uh, you know, the the thought all along was, what if we um, what if we start the day with a devotional thought, and what if we could spend the evening. Uh, and wrap up the evening just with a time of prayer. And so uh, I'm glad you're here to be a part of that and uh, looking forward to spending some time with you. And I want to talk to you a little bit about prayer, actually. Uh, I mean, I know you know. Hey, Nora, how are you? Feliz Navidad. I got you. I got you first. Uh, Nora Nelson and I, since probably 1984, uh, see who can tell each other Feliz Navidad first at Christmas time. So I think, hey, when I call it, you know, during Holy Week, I think I think I won for twenty for twenty twenty, Nora. But you win every other year, so give me a break. I mean, it's it's my turn uh, for crying out loud. So yeah, um, I think I saw I saw uh, Bill and Brenda Robertson. 
uh, we're on here from uh, uh, down in Alabama. Great to great to have you on here. And and I, I you know I don't call everybody's names because I'm missing names, but I'm really glad you're here and uh, just a great opportunity for us to 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 close out the day uh, with a with a time of prayer. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, a little bit about prayer. I mean I know you know prayer is important, um, um, but but what I found at one point uh, in my life, at one season in my life was the reality that my prayer and my prayer life consisted of whatever was most urgent with me uh, at the time. So whatever, whatever was, was the biggest issue uh, that I was dealing with, that's what I was praying for at the time. And I found as a result of that, I was amazingly inconsistent in praying for anything that didn't rise to that threshold uh, of, uh, of urgency in my life. I mean, I was basically, my prayer life consisted, consisted of moving from crisis to crisis to crisis and, and, and throwing to the Lord, uh, what is my next crisis? And, and then trying to help him out with some ideas as to how he could deal with that, uh, that I think would be great, that would already have my seal of approval uh, if he would choose to move in that direction. But as a result of that, my prayer for missionaries was extremely non-existent unless a missionary rose to that level in my life, that threshold of, uh, of where it was urgent that I was praying for them. But the idea that I would be praying for missionaries uh, was um, only, only when they rose to that level of urgency in my life. When did I pray for people in government and, and those who have authority over me? Only when a crisis or an issue rose to that level that it became a part of my prayer life. So for, for, for so much of my life, honestly, uh, my prayer life was really very self-centered. It was all about me and it was all about giving to God. I mean, I, I guess uh, I took very seriously cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Uh, but the only thing that I ever prayed about or brought to the Lord was whatever the next urgent issue was that I was dealing with. And uh, it was, uh, it's been several years ago now, but just in talking with a friend, uh, we were talking discipleship issues and talking about how, how we pray. And, uh, and he, he began to, to talk me through his regiment of prayer that made so much sense to me that for the last I would say eight or 10 years. Uh, it has been how I in my personal private life pray. And so, uh, and so this week, since I had this week to talk about prayer and more specifically to pray uh, with you, uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to kind of, uh, you know, give you a page from my playbook and let you know how I do that. And, uh, and if it's helpful for you, then, then God bless you. But my Monday is actually the day that I pray specifically for my entire family. Now, what do I pray for on Tuesday? Well, you know, tune in tomorrow and I'll tell you what I pray for on Tuesday. But Monday is my family time. And so when, I'm, when it's just me and the Lord and I'm, and I'm in prayer uh, at the start of my day, my prayer on Monday consists of a line by line, name by name, item by item, person by person, uh, of my family. I'll start with my parents. My parents are, are both alive and they are doing great. And so I'll pray for my mom and dad. And then I'll pray for, uh, I'll pray for my siblings and I pray for uh, their spouses and I'll pray for their kids. And then I'll pray for Tammy and I'll pray for our daughters and their husbands and their kids. And as the Holy Spirit begins to lead, right? Um, it's not necessarily that I have a uh, just a, a, a rote um, uh, way that I'll pray. But as the Holy Spirit begins to lead, I'll just, I'll follow that. And I may be, begin praying for a member of my family uh, in ways that I never would have thought to pray for them. But I begin praying for them earnestly as, as the Lord begins showing me areas to pray. And so Monday is my family day. Now, I'm not going to pray for my family uh, with you right here. That's really, uh, that's really me and the Lord. Um, but I want to encourage you, even when we close down this, uh, this, um, this prayer time, 
I want to invite you just to linger. And if there's anyone there with you, uh, just to linger together and pray for your families and name them one by one and begin lifting up them up to the Lord uh, and asking that the Lord would move in their lives. Every, everyone from, uh, from parents to great, great grandchildren and everyone in between. And uh, for me, Monday's the day that I focus specifically on all of the relationships uh, that are near and dear to me uh, biologically and my family. And so uh, that's, 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 that's what I do. Now, I do know that there are a number of uh, prayer requests that have come in uh, for, uh, during the course of, uh, of today. And I wanna pull some of those up so that we can pray. Um, Mike, uh, we're praying for Mike Moyer. Uh, he has been having trouble with his lungs collapsing. They have not been able to diagnose it. Uh, they are wait, awaiting tests, results from Mayo Clinic. So let's take a minute and pray for Mike. Lord, we lift him up to you and pray, God, that you would touch. Don't know the, the latest uh, status of this prayer request, but you do. But I pray, God, for Mike, that you would, uh, that you would bring healing, physical healing. By your stripes, we are healed. And I pray, God, that you would bring healing to his physical body. And I don't know the nature of his soul or his relationship with you. But I pray even this, uh, this ch alteration in his um, calendar and schedule would only be an opportunity to, uh, for him to draw near to you and to begin to experience you and see you. Another prayer request uh, that we have is for Patty Mason. Her great, great nephew, six month old Benjamin, is in a Texas hospital, six months old, in a Texas hospital on oxygen. He has been there for some time. Ben is a twin. Uh, they were born one month premature. And so we're praying for little Benjamin, six month old Benjamin, and for all of his family, um, that, that all of them are not able to see him uh, even while he's there in the hospital because of what the conditions are. With, uh, with the virus and the issues in hospitals where, uh, where visitors are, are not allowed. So let's, let's pray for Benjamin and for his family. God, it is such a privilege for us to be able to come to you and to lift up uh, this precious little baby. We are so grateful again, God, for life. It is so sacred and it is so precious. And we thank you for this little boy, this little twin. And God, as he is struggling for air to breathe, uh, I pray, Lord, that you would minister healing to him and that his, his lungs would be able to function exactly as you created them and designed them to function. And I pray that, um, that his life would be a testimony mm -hmm. to the breath of God uh, that breathes and brings life. And uh, I pray, God, that his whole family would be drawn close to you, even as a result of, of watching little Benjamin's life be restored. And so would you minister to this precious little boy and to his twin, and to his mom and dad. Minister here, Lord. Bring them peace, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I'm looking at other prayer requests. Um, and I think those are, really, those are all, the, 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 uh, all of the requests um, that, have, um, that have come in. Do you have a prayer request? Uh, just comment there, uh, a prayer request, and let's spend a minute here, a minute or two, and I'd be happy to lift those things up. Uh, as we wind down our day, as we come to the end of the day, I'd be happy to, to pray for whatever's on your heart. Um, so if you will um, put those in the comments, then, uh, then they'll get here. And um, yeah, we'll lift those things up and pray. Just a good opportunity um, during this Holy Week, uh, really for me, just wanting to, to actually spend time and, uh, and close out the evening, not so much with a teaching uh, or a devotional thought. Um, there, there, there is so much uh, during Holy Week for you and I to focus on. Uh, Ken did a great job this morning uh, talking about that Monday in the last week uh, leading up to the crucifixion. Tomorrow, Pastor Rick LaPira uh, will be talking about Tuesday, uh, tomorrow morning at, at nine o'clock in the morning devotion. But um, yeah, so I don't see, um, oh yeah, okay, sure. Uh, so we're gonna pray for Jack's daughter, Becky, is being induced uh, tomorrow. Lord, we thank you 
uh, for, for life and for this new life that is about to enter the world. And as this mother on this birthday eve uh, is in fact preparing for, uh, for the events of tomorrow, I pray a restful night's sleep for her. I pray, God, um, that you would draw her near to you and that she would recognize that you are uh, really the father and the parent and the one who even helps parents know how to parent and how to do what they do. And we pray for health for Becky uh, through this birth process. Uh, we pray for health for the baby, Lord, during this process as well. We are excited and grateful for this opportunity uh, for new life to come into the world and uh, for this opportunity to pray for both the mother and the child and for the whole extended family. We lift them up to you in Jesus' name, amen. Tammy Jordan is here and we are praying for firefighters and for EMT workers. They are so much the heroes and, I, and I'm just grateful again for, uh, for my wife and for all the medical workers who are going into clinics and going into doctor's offices where, uh, where literally only God knows uh, the things uh, that are coming into those buildings uh, and they do it to care. And so, yeah, let's pray for, uh, for those who are in harm's way on our behalf. Lord, we thank you for our police department, for the sheriff's department, for the highway patrol, uh, for our military uh, professionals around the world. We thank you for our medical workers and for the firemen and the firefighters and for the EMTs. And uh, Lord, for those who are on the front lines of, of helping people, uh, I pray your strength to them. Uh, so many of them are exhausted. They are making very important decisions uh, on the fly. And Lord, I pray that for as many of them as know you, mm -hmm. I pray that it would be your voice that speaks calm and speaks direction, even as to how they uh, fulfill their role uh, in, in, in uh, being on the front line of, of, of bringing help and bringing aid and bringing assistance to those who are in need. Strengthen them, Lord, encourage them, Lord. We are so grateful for the reports that we're hearing even today about how uh, this, uh, this virus uh, seems, seems to be, appears at least initially in, in very important places. Uh, the numbers seem to be in decline and we pray that that uh, process would continue, not so we can have our life back, Lord, but for those families uh, who have been um, um, faced with uh, the issues and the ramifications of what this uh, horrible uh, virus has brought about, Lord. It's for their peace and for their comfort uh, and, and, and even for the fear to stop, Lord, uh, for so many people. Uh, for those who don't know you, Lord, I pray that this would be a season where they would come to know you, even as a result, if, if, it's, if it's because of their anxiety, if it's because of their fear, we have all come to you because at some point we came to the end of ourselves. And if this would be the hour, if this would be the moment, if this would be the circumstance, Lord, we pray for a great revival and a great spiritual awakening to take place, that, uh, that the, the wake of the spring of 2020 uh, would not be one of death, but it would be a wake of spiritual life and renewal and revival around the world. We pray that you would do it by your spirit, Lord. We can't bring it about in our own flesh, but we ask that you would bring it about by your spirit, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we bring our, our hearts in line with your light, mm -hmm. uh, with, with yours as well, Lord. Lifting up uh, Brandy this morning and praying for her sister and for her niece and her brother-in-law who are having some difficulties. And we pray, God, that you would be right in the middle and that you would begin to sort out and that you would bring correction and that you would bring right and that you would bring peace and joy. That you bring that to us. And I pray, God, that you would bring that into, into these homes as well. Lifting up uh, Aubrey and, uh, and uh, her friend uh, and uh, this baby um, with lots of medical issues. Um, Lord, we pray uh, for a healing here for, for, for this little boy. And, the, and a peace for his parents. And I pray, God, that they would find peace in you, ultimately, that they would find their peace to be in you. I thank you for Judy, who's always caring, and we pray for the elderly residents who are living in facilities, and they are yeah, so fearful uh, of this virus. Lord, we pray that you would bring peace to them, to, to our seniors, to those who have 
uh, taught us um, and that we've learned from them and they cared for us. And now as they stand in a, in a position of need, God, uh, we lift up the elderly residents uh, of, of living in facilities and, and God pray that you would bring peace to them. Uh, I thank you, God, for, uh, for Jennifer uh, and for her friend Summer, uh, who's dealing with medical issues. And Lord, we pray for Summer that you would bring healing to her as well. Thank you for Brenda. I thank you for Brenda. Uh, for our longtime friendship, and I pray for uh, the girls and the kids uh, to come back to the fold and to walk with you again. Um, we we lift uh, we lift all of these things up, and Lord, there there are so many countless more, but it's our pleasure to be able to come before you and and really to close out our day by casting our cares upon you. And even as we transition now to where around tables, or around bedrooms, around living rooms as individuals are lifting up their own families to you. I pray, God, that you would give each of us uh, direction, spiritual direction, even as to how we could pray in the spirit specific for all of the members of our family as we take this Monday to lift them up, relationship by relationship, person by person uh, within our family. Would you, um, would you hear us and would you direct us even as we pray for those whom we love. We ask these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, listen, thanks uh, for being here. One, uh, one announcement, I think one announcement. I told you Rick, uh, I told you Rick is going to be um, bringing the um, d morning devotion uh, tomorrow morning during Holy Week on Tuesday, uh, pertinent to what was going on in the life of Jesus on Tuesday prior to um, prior to uh, the crucifixion. Also, tomorrow at 1 o'clock, Diane Duncan, let's see, uh, baking with Diane, uh, they'll be making, oh, we will be, we will be making resurrection rolls. Um, you will need one can of croissant rolls. You will need large marshmallows. You will need butter and cinnamon and sugar. And Diane will be talking to her daughter about her experience with her heart issue at the Royals game and her life since. And that will be live uh, tomorrow at one o'clock. Now, I got to tell you, I'm getting a kick out of this. I, I, I hope you understand. Okay, we are not a television network. We are a church. Okay, we have no degrees in in broadcast journalism. Uh, I'm a preacher. Okay, and a poor preacher at that. But nevertheless, um, we're not a television network, right? So, so we had a couple of weeks worth of stuff that we felt like we could do, um, and so we pre-recorded. You know, Diane pre-recorded the things. Uh, in the church kitchen, and now we're like, okay, we got nothing. What do, what do we, so what are we going to make today? Well, today we're going to see what we can do with wax apples. So you're going to need some sugar, definitely some sugar, and we're going to fry them, and uh, how bad can they be? That's pretty much where we're at at this point. It's week three, people, so that's pretty much where, we at, uh, where we're at. But anyway, ought to be a great time tomorrow, baking with Diane. So uh, yeah, you're going you're gonna to love that. God bless you. Thanks for being here. Pray for your, um, pray for your family. Go, go and pray for your aunts and your uncles and those people that you rarely, you know, the ones that you really can't, can't, can't deal with. Pray extra hard. Uh, pray extra hard for them. I want you to know I love you. I'm glad you're in my life and uh, God is still on the throne and we're going to be okay. God bless you. Tomorrow morning with Rick.